fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Throughout the western United States, the career of the mysterious phantom figure of the plains has been told and retold until the present day. He did more than any other individual to bring law and order to the lawless frontier. With his great horse Silver and his faithful Indian companion Tonto, he roamed the west, fighting crime wherever he found it. And now the thundering hoofs of Silver... Return us to the days of danger and adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We must hurry, old fellow. There's trouble ahead and Tonto is waiting for us. Hurry, old Silver. As the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto came to the top of a small hill. They heard the distant chant of Indians rising from the valley. Tonto, that's a chant of the Indian god of war. Not, not right. Maybe we take a look in valley. <coughs> Get the horses back out of sight in case those Indians have scouts out watching. Huh? Come, Silver. Come, my boy. Come, Tonto. You stay there now. You, you see Indian? Look down there. That's a war dance. Oh, those fellas. Bad engine. You know who they are? Me take good look. That means trouble for someone. Trouble for white people. Oh, this bad. Tell me. That leader, Geronimo. The fox. Huh? And those Geronimo's men? Huh? Well, it's going to be even worse than we thought. But who are they planning to attack? There's no white settlement for miles. It two, three day travel. Perhaps they're planning war on other Indians. No. Geronimo not do that. That's true. Geronimo doesn't want other Indians' lands or crops. He wants white men's gold and guns and liquor. And he wants scalps. He hates white men and... What? And soldiers. Tonto, Geronimo hates the soldiers. Maybe, Tonto, get closer look. How can you get closer without being seen? That dance for all Indian. Him call other Indian to council. Yes. Tonto... Indian. Tonto, could you go to their council and learn the plans? Tonto, try. If you went there, could you get away safely? Me try. We can learn what those savage outlaws are planning. We can warn the people. Ah, uh, Tonto, how to get home? You'd better run saddle and go there bareback like the other Indians. That's right. I'll help you get ready, Kimasabi. Whatever you learn will be of some help. Uh, if you have trouble getting away, send me a signal. Then I'll be here watching. Any white fellow, steady there. There, no. Now saddle off. Good luck to you, Tonto. Get him up, white fella. Get him up. (laughs) 
the savages continued their war chant far into the night. No one noticed Tonto as he joined the other Indians who came from many surrounding hills in answer to the call of Chief Geronimo. When the moon was high overhead, the leader raised his hand. The chants and dancing stopped. Only the throb of the tom-toms continued. Many times, white man drive Indian back. Many times, red brother fight. But war god smile on white man. Thunder gun of white man, better than arrow of Indian. That why white time man all time win. Yeah. Uh, red brother, better fortune head. I lead to white man fort. You get gun like white man. Geronimo, who speak? Me, Hunko, speak. What say? How you get white man gun? You think Geronimo fool? Geronimo called fox. Red fox with plenty cunning. Soldier in fort many time drive red man back. This time, red man go with peace pipe. Ask soldier counsel. Fifty men go, Geronimo. Under blanket, knife, tomahawk. Once inside fort, we fight. You, you go as friend with peace pipe? Huh? You break oath. Oath? Who you, Tonto, speak of oath? Geronimo want gun of thunder. Geronimo get thunder gun for brave. Quit fighting. Inside fort, gates open. Other braves come in. We win great victory. No white man live. All red men win two feather of eagle. We be favored children of thunder god. We win great victory. Much food. knew the plan of the savages. And while they danced and shouted, working themselves into a frenzy, he slipped away unnoticed and joined the masked man. Then, while the shouting and stamping was at its peak, a familiar cry rang out in the night. away at Fort Custer, 123 men answered roll call the next morning. The commander of the garrison, Captain Ruddy, returned to his quarters after the ceremonies of the morning were finished. He turned to his aide and said, Peterson, I think we've heard the last of those confounded redskins. I wish I could feel convinced of that. What? Any reason why you can't? Been over six weeks since we repelled them the last time. Yes, sir, I know it. Prior to that, they raided every few days. Took quite a lot to convince them that our guns were mightier than their arrows. True enough, sir. Their arrows were worthless against the stockade. Well, then, what more do you want? <laughs> Declare you're harder to convince than the Indians. Geronimo is their leader, sir. What of that? Well, he's known as the Red Fox, and he's earned a name because of his tricks. I think he's shown us his last trick. The food situation is getting critical. Eh? Our scouts and hunters are coming back practically empty-handed. You think... I think, if you don't mind my saying so, that Geronimo is planning to starve us out. The devil! And the rate the food's coming in, and the rate the supply is decreasing, he's in a fair way to succeed. Peterson, you know Geronimo better than the other soldiers, don't you? I've fought him a long time, sir. Is he smart enough to think of driving all the game from around here? He's smart enough to think of anything. 
And he's smart enough to want our guns real bad. Suppose we sent a messenger to find him and tried to make some terms of peace. He'd agree to anything, but he wouldn't keep his word. No? Not as long as he can benefit by breaking it. Geronimo hates white men. He hates soldiers in particular. And he loves fighting. He's the most treacherous skunk alive. I know, sir. I've seen Geronimo in action at close range. What's the trouble? I don't know, sir. I'll go see you. Hey, man, don't let him hit it all. What's this mean? Oh, I'm shooting. Steady there, Silver. Captain Ruddy. He's bound to see you. A masked man. Bring your commandant. I'll talk to no one else. Silence. There's the commandant. It's Captain Ruddy. Captain Ruddy. Are you in command of this garrison? I am. Then you're the man I want to speak to. Captain, we've done our best, but him and that engine with him wouldn't stop. You all had your orders. Yeah, but you can't shoot a man down like that. Your guards aren't to blame. He just grabbed my gun. And the engine grabbed mine. And in they come. What do you want? To speak to you alone. Who are you? Remove that mask if you want to speak. I'll speak with the mask on. My identity doesn't matter. I've come with news of Geronimo. That snake! Capture the man. Remove the mask. Stand away from me. Look at them guns. Did you see him draw? Captain... You want to prevent the loss of every man in your detachment, you listen to me. This Indian is a friend of mine. I don't care for Indians, no matter who they are. What's that got to do with Why, accident? Uh... Tonto had just come from a meeting of Indians in a valley quite away from here. Geronimo is calling them together. So he's still making plans, huh? I know what his plans are, and I came here to give them to you, Captain Ruddy. Do you want them? What are they? Come into your quarters. I'll tell them to you there. Tonto, you take care of my horse. Come in, then. Peterson, stand at the door and keep your hands on your guns. You men guard the Indian. Watch the two horses. Yes, sir. Thank you, Captain Ruddy. Sit down there. I'd prefer to stand. Very well, stand. Now start talking. I've tried to come to you as a friend. Then remove your mask. Geronimo is planning to attack you with men enough to outnumber you ten to one. Let him. He's tried that before. We've been able to repulse him each time. But this time he's coming forward and leaving his savages a short distance away from the fort. He's going to bring only about 50 men with him. And he'll carry a flag of truce. Geronimo! Quiet! Yes, sir. You say Geronimo's coming here with a flag of truce? That's his plan. Not to surrender? No. Or talk terms of peace? No. Then what? He plans to get inside your garrison with 50 men. Coming here under the protection of the flag of truce. At his signal, each man will draw a knife from beneath his blanket. They'll attack your soldiers and take them by surprise. Why, that sneaky... While eating the flag of truth. Yes. While your men are fighting with the 50 savages, the gates will be opened so the entire force of Indians can enter your fort. So that's his plan. Knowing of it, you could, of course, refuse to accept the flag of truce. And merely postpone the fight that's bound to come. Exactly. And stay here until we're starved out. Are you short of food? Yes. We thought Geronimo was planning to starve us out. That might be his next plan if this one fails. Thank you for the information. I'll use my judgment in regard to acting on it. That means you'll do one of two things. You'll acknowledge the flag of truce and let yourself and your garrison be wiped out. Or you'll postpone the end. Geronimo will have other plans. Perhaps uh, you have a suggestion. That's why I came here. And why do you think I'll follow your suggestion? You come here masked. You don't reveal your identity. I have a and plan I... which I think will end the war against Geronimo for all time. A plan? Yes. Will you listen to it? I'll listen. I won't agree to accept it, however. Captain Ruddy, you're a hard man to convince. I don't know how long you've been in the West or what messages your scouts have brought to you. I've been in the West for a long time. My scouts bring me news of what happens. Very well. Then look at these bullets. Bullets? Examine them. These are not lead. No, they're not lead, Captain Ruddy. Silver. This looks like silver. They're made of silver. Then you... You must be... I begin to understand. Suppose you outline your plan to me. Thank you, Captain Ruddy. Sit down. Sit down there and talk. Peterson. Yes, sir? Leave us here alone. Alone, sir? I said to leave us here alone. I'm going to listen to the plan of the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. And now, 
Now, to continue the story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto learned of a plot by Geronimo and his savage followers to attack a garrison. The Lone Ranger went to Captain Ruddy, commander of Fort Custer, and persuaded him to listen to his plans. Our next scene takes us into the garrison, just outside the door of Captain Ruddy's quarters. Peterson, his aide, is there with Tonto. I wonder if there's any trouble in there. The captain, your friend, have been talking a long time. Mm. What's the scheme to be, Indian? Tonto, not know. Captain Ruddy's got a bad temper when he's riled up. I wonder if they're arguing. No. You don't think so, huh? No. Look here, Tonto. Uh Huh? How do you think we could wipe out Geronimo for good? Maybe Captain fix him. I wish... Uh... Lieutenant. Yes, sir? Pass the word to have the bugler sound assembly. Assembly? Pass the word. Uh, yes, sir. Right away, sir. Pass the word to sound assembly. Have the bugler sound assembly. What's going on? What about the mask man? Lieutenant. Up, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. My full equipment. Have the orderly bring up my horse. Yes, sir. What about that mask man? When the men were lined up, there were expressions of surprise and wonder in their faces. Finally, Captain Ruddy spoke. Men, we're threatened with starvation if we remain here. If we can drive out the outlaw savages under Geronimo for good, we'll have no further trouble. We're going to make a move that will accomplish one of two things. It will either hasten our finish or make this country secure for all time from the massacres of Geronimo and his followers. I'm not asking you to make a choice. I've already made it for you. We're going to leave the garrison behind us. Captain. Yes, I'll lead them out. I am putting the entire future of Fort Custer in your hands. Thank you, Captain Ruddy. If your plan succeeds, Congress shall hear about it. Peterson. Yes, sir? You'll remain behind and take orders from the man who wears the mask. But, sir, I... I uh, yes, sir. Very good, sir. Your horse, Captain. Uh, now, my friend, may heaven guide you. Power... Hey! he trusted you. You, the Indian, and me. Three of us. And all of Geronimo's band will be coming here very soon. Mm, me help close gate. Heavy. Heavy. There. Barred and set tight. Now, what's orders, sir? Now, Peterson, we have nothing to do but wait until Geronimo arrives with his false flag of truce. I don't think we'll have long to wait. In due time, the Indians rode into view at the top of a rise a short distance away and approached the fort. Two score and ten of them, with blankets draped from their shoulders reined in their mustangs while Geronimo himself rode a few paces forward, carrying the flag of truce. Captain! Captain! Your red brother would speak of peace! Answer him, Peterson. 
You think he sees me? Yes, he's looking right at you. What do you want? It is Geronimo who comes. What do you want? I come talk of peace. Who are those men with you? They come unarmed. You guarantee they don't carry weapons? I give word. Open gates. We come make terms. Shall I tell him to come in? Yes. We'll open the gates. Come in in single file. Leave your horses outside. We obey command. There. I reckon the next few minutes we'll see things happen. Yes. Now to get that gate open. Toto, help you. Left bit. Now we hit. Yeah. Not too wide, Toto. Just enough for one man at a time to slip through. Uh, I told you what to say, Peterson. Yep, I understand. I'll do my best. I'll keep in the background where they won't see me at first. There they come. Come in in single file, Geronimo. You first. The other's right behind you. We're going to let you in one at a time, understand? I come leg of truce. That's all right. Just step right inside here. Uh. All right, close now, get this, this trick. The rest of your men will be admitted just as soon as we've looked beneath that blanket you're wearing. Me come, flag of truth. Search him. Uh, oh, here. Here, knife. You, you. All right, Geronimo. You violated the flag of truce by coming here armed. We took the right to search you. You will not trust We don't trust you at all. All right, Tonto. Let the next man in. You come. Look beneath this Indian blanket. I've got him. Oh, Here's a knife. Oh, no. All right, Redskin. Get over there beside Geronimo. I'm holding a gun on you. Not a word of warning from you, Geronimo. At the first outcry, you'll die. Now let the rest of the men in one by one. We'll find weapons beneath every one of their blankets. time, the 50 men who accompanied Geronimo were admitted through the narrow opening of the gate and disarmed. The helpless, enraged Indians were herded into a corner of the garrison and held there under the guns of the Lone Ranger and Peterson, the captain's aide. Then the gate was once more closed and barred. Now, Geronimo, we found that your flag of truce was meaningless. What you do? You see, there are no soldiers in the garrison. You've come to fight an enemy that doesn't exist. You know where the soldiers are? This trick! It is a trick. The soldiers are outside waiting for you and all your men to surrender. Geronimo will never surrender to white men. As to that, we shall see. Here, Silver. Come, white fella. Peterson, you know how to leave the fort. Go now and join your company. Yes, sir. But before I go, will you tell me how long it'll be before you join us? Inside of five minutes. You sure it won't be longer than that? I'm sure. I'll tell the captain, sir. Get yep. ready, Tonto. Tommy, Ready. Geronimo, there is no food here. The soldiers are no longer in the fort. They're outside. Geronimo, kill all the white men, for trick. You know that no one can leave the fort while those men are outside to prevent it. When all your men are inside, no one will be able to leave in the face of the army guns. Geronimo got many hundred warriors outside. But those warriors are waiting for your signal to come inside. They not kill them, signal. When that signal is given, they'll storm through the gates on their mustangs. Once in, there'll be only one way for them to leave, and that is by surrendering to the army. Geronimo will never give signal. You'll not need to give the signal. Get the gates open, Tano, just a little. Uh, the braves will open them wide when they come. Gate open. Now, Geronimo, do you still refuse to give the signal for your men? Me not give them it. Very well, then. Tato will give it for you. Tato, the signal, the battle cry of Geronimo. Quiet, listen, there they come. They can't hear you above their shouts, Geronimo. Here they come into the trap. All right, Tato. I'll Get out, boy. rode out through the gates of the fort as the savages rushed toward it. The Indians, intent on the massacre and the eagle feathers that would reward them, paid little attention to the two white horses that dashed away. Meanwhile, Peterson joined Captain Ruddy and the cavalry. Oh, oh. What do you report? 
Is that ready, Captain? The first part of the trick worked. What of the masked man? He sent me out the rear gate. Is he safe? I don't know, sir. If he's trapped inside the fort, we'll have to attack. Try to rescue him. But, sir... Stand ready, men. Yes, sir. The Redskins must have discovered the trick by this time. Why don't the masked man show himself? What's happened to him? He must be... There he comes. He's got away. Look at him riding down here. He's safe. He's away from the Indian. And there's the Indian with him. Come on. There's no sign of pursuit yet. Good for him. Oh, 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 Captain Ruddy. Wheel those cannon around and hurry. Hear that, men? You give the orders. My men will obey. Right, Is the cannon loaded? Yes, sir. Aim for the main gate of the garrison. Are all the savages inside? Yes. Send a detachment to guard the rear gates. Lieutenant Carter, take charge. Take the first and second troop with you. Keep those Indians inside the fort. Don't let them get out. Come on, men. This way. Hey, they're opening the gate. Look. Grab the shot beside the gate. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Fire. A perfect shot. Right alongside the gate. They slammed the gate shut again. There, Captain Ruddy. You can keep them from leaving by the main gate. Indefinitely. The lieutenant and his men can keep them from leaving by the rear gate. You've taken all the food from the fort. It's all with us. Then you're in full control. Those Indians will surrender or starve. And I don't care which they do. Your husband will be able to get food now and bring it to you. Geronimo and his men are defeated for all time. And by the simple means of giving them what they were ready to fight for. <laughs> I never heard the like of this. Sir, if you'll give me your name, you'll be cited by Congress for what you've done. We go now. Hail Silver! We The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.